Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Well, in episode 12, I taught you about depth of field and how we can achieve shallow depth of field. Well, that's when you have your subject in focus and everything else falls out of focus. Well, in that video, I mentioned that I'd also make a video showing you how to do the opposite. Instead of just getting a single item in focus, well, I show you how you can get everything in focus from a near object all the way to infinity. Well, to kick things off, let's look at our question from Eduardo. Eduardo asked, what is hyperfocal distance and what is its use? Well, hyperfocal distance is used when you want to get as much in focus as possible. When you focus your lens, well, you're focusing it to a certain distance. Now, you might be focusing it on something that's three feet away or 20 feet away or even 50 miles away, but the point is that you always focus to a distance. And hyperfocal distance is the magic distance that gives you a maximum depth of field. When you focus your lens at the hyperfocal distance, the depth of field extends from half the hyperfocal distance all the way to infinity. Now, just a note for maximum depth of field, you should be using smaller aperture values. Now, I suggest you use values of at least f8, but for best results, try f16 or smaller. And for more about aperture values, you can check out Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, episode 14. Well, hyperfocal distance is different for different lenses and different cameras, and it also changes based on your aperture setting. There is no one specific hyperfocal dif distance. It's variable. But before we get too far into this, let's take a closer look at the definition of hyperfocal distance. When you focus your lens at the hyperfocal distance, the depth of field extends from half the hyperfocal distance to infinity. If our hyperfocal distance was 10 feet, we'd focus our lens at 10 feet, and our depth of field would extend from 5 feet, which is half the distance to our hyperfocal distance, all the way to infinity. If our hyperfocal distance was 3 feet, we'd focus our lens at 3 feet, and our depth of field would extend from 1.5 feet all the way to infinity. Now that you know what hyperfocal distance is, it's important to understand two more things. The first, how to focus your lens at a specific distance, and the second, how to figure out what your hyperfocal distance is. Well, let's start by talking about focusing our lens. You can focus your lens at a specific distance by using the distance scale on your lens. You simply set your focus to manual focus, and then you can rotate the focus ring on your lens so that the proper distance is showing on the scale. Now, some lenses don't have a distance scale, and if that's true for your lens, well, you can estimate the difference by saying, I know that's about three feet away, or my car is 12 feet, and so that's about the length of my car. So you can estimate, or you can use a tape measure or something like that. Well, let's talk about the other thing, and that is how do we calculate the hyperfocal distance? Well, we need to know what the variables are, and there are a few things that impact the hyperfocal distance, and that is the length of your lens, your aperture value, and the circle of confusion. Well, the circle of confusion is sometimes called the circle of least confusion, and there are debates about the proper calculations for the circle of confusion, but the one thing that everyone agrees on is that the circle of confusion can be really confusing. Well, you don't really need to know all the math or proper definitions when it comes to the circle of confusion. Just understand that at its basic level, it's determined by the size of your sensor, and it's a number you need to calculate your hyperfocal distance. So to figure out the hyperfocal distance, we just take our lens length, our aperture value, and the circle of confusion, and do some advanced calculations, or we can do it the easy way, and that is just to use a depth of field calculator, and that's what I recommend. Now, depth of field calculators are really inexpensive and are readily available. In fact, you could just Google depth of field calculator and you'll find a bunch that you can use. Or if you have a smartphone, you can download a depth of field calculator and then you can use that when you're out shooting. I actually use an app called D of F and I think I bought it for about two bucks and it really works great. 
Now, most depth of field calculators, and specifically the applications, well, they'll allow you to choose from a bunch of preset cameras, so you don't even have to know about the circle of confusion for your specific sensor size. You just choose your camera and you're off and going, and they make it really easy to find that hyperfocal distance for your specific lens and camera. But if you need to know your uh, circle of confusion, that specific number, there's this great resource at dofmaster.com that has a large list of cameras and their specific circles of confusion. It's really a terrific site. So let's review. To determine your hyperfocal distance, you'll need a depth of field calculator. Just input your focal length, your aperture value, and the circle of confusion, or choose from one of the preset cameras that it has in there. And it's gonna tell you exactly what your hyperfocal distance is. And once you have that, all you have to do is take that distance and then you'll need to set your lens on manual focus mode and then focus it to the hyperfocal distance using your distance scale on your lens. And at this point, you can actually look through your lens and you'll probably see that, contrary to popular belief, everything is not in focus. Well, the reason for this is that the aperture, when you're just uh, waiting to focus your lens, it's actually all the way open so that you can see through the lens and that lets in a lot of light. So don't be tempted to refocus, because if you do, you're gonna mess things up. So instead, what you can do is you can use a little button called the depth of, uh, depth of field preview button to see how much of your scene is going to be in focus. And the depth of field preview button is usually next to your lens toward the bottom of your camera. Now, when you press this button, the aperture is gonna close down to the aperture value that you've set, and you'll be able to see the depth of field change right before your eyes. You'll also see that everything gets really dark because the aperture is closing down, so don't let that startle you. Well, we're almost done, but there are a couple more things we need to go over. It's usually best to focus your camera just a bit beyond your hyperfocal distance. In other words, if your hyperfocal distance is six and a half feet, it's probably best to focus at seven feet. And that way you're certain that you're gonna get infinity in focus and you're only gonna move that close focus point by a really, really small amount. So when in doubt, focus a bit farther than your hyperfocal distance. And lastly, there are some lenses that actually have a depth of field scale built right onto the lens. If you have one of those lenses, then determining your depth of field is just really, really simple. And I'm gonna show you one. I have this Leica lens right here. And all you have to do is just set your aperture value. So on this, I'm gonna set this to F8. And then you can use your depth of field scale to tell you where to focus. Now with this one, all I'll do is once I have this set to F8, I'm gonna use my depth of field scale and I'm gonna focus so that my infinity mark is right over the eight, which matches my aperture value of F8. And when I do that, it's showing me that there's this little center point that my focus distance is right about 10 feet. And then on the opposite side of that, I can see that my near focus point is about five feet. So uh, I'll have everything from five feet all the way to infinity in focus. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is just put the infinity mark over the aperture value to the right of center, and it will show you exactly how much is gonna be in focus. So if you've got one of these guys, you don't even need a calculator. It's really, really simple. Well, thank you so much, Eduardo, for sending us the question this week. If you have a question about photography, I'd love to see it. Just send it to askmark at adorama.com, and I just might use it in the next episode. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.